fans of a Horus Heresy well-painted miniatures and people who really want to see the galaxy burn. Thank you very much for joining me for a model showcase, a painted model showcase of Erebus and Corphiron from Forge World's Horus Heresy character series. As I said, we're straight in with some painted miniature videos with all this spare time I've got at the moment. These two miniatures were painted for me by a commission painter on Twitter who goes by the name of Heretic Dead. I will be leaving some links to her. She does do commission painting, so please do check her out on Twitter, Instagram, and the rest of it. But yeah, I really wanted to share these two with you because I really like these models and I think Deb did a great job of painting them. And of course, well, it's Erebus and Corphiron, so it's not just any two jerks from 30k. In terms of what we're going to do in this video, firstly I'm going to talk a little bit about the kit and the miniatures themselves, how I found building that. I'm not going to talk a lot about it, but there is one thing in particular that I would like to discuss. Then we're going to move on to take a look at the display as a, as a whole as we get set out in front of us with the two word bearer officers on their scenic base and then we'll take a closer look at each of the miniatures so I can show you up close some of the wonderful details and nice painting on these models. So there you go, that's the plan. Right, first off, the kit. So this is one of the earlier sets that came out from Forge World's Horus Heresy character series and in the kit you get both First Chaplain Erebus and First Captain Corphiron with a scenic base. So yeah, it's a pretty cool set. As far as character series models go, I guess it's probably par for the course on value. My kit was fine. I mean, I bought it well after it was released. Everything was nicely cast. Yeah, it all went together very well. But there is one part of the kit that is one of what you might call a rite of passage of building resin miniatures. And those are the lightning claws on Corphiron's unique cataphracty suit of armour. And I thought we would just have a look at these and I'll just talk to you a bit about them. I mean, these are absolutely stunningly detailed pieces. Now, in the kit, each one of these lightning claws is a separate component. So you have five lightning claws to attach to the Terminator armor's powered gauntlets. And let's just say it's quite delicate work this is. I think if I recall correctly, I used a pair of tweezers to do it. I mean, you've got to be obviously very careful taking these parts off the keys. So very delicate. And then your locating of those components onto the actual model has to be pretty precise. And I think with these, I got pretty good spacing and I was happy with the outcome, as you can see here. And they do, they look absolutely brilliant, don't get me wrong. Difficult to do, but they look incredible. One thing I did do, and this is perhaps a little tip, I, I did quite a lot of extra gluing, quite subtly as to not make it look like it's wanting glue. But I then ran thin super glue across the side of each blade and then sprayed it with some accelerant and that was just to stiffen them because I thought they looked a little bit too fragile and uh, they're still I mean as you would expect they've still got a bit of flex in them but the end effect was good there are a couple of other things I actually did with Corfair on in terms of the build, which I remembered. First thing, I think I lifted his head up a bit in his armoured cowl because I thought it was sat too low down. It just made it a little bit harder to see, so it was only like maybe half a millimetre, if that. But it did just raise it up a bit and I think the model looks better for it. And I also heat bended his pose slightly to make him look a bit more like he was walking, had a little bit more motion. I mean, it was a deliberate intent of the sculptor to make him look ungainly because, of course, you know, Corferon is this old uh, man who was half converted into an Astartes and he relies on the power systems of his Terminator suit, his unique Terminator armour to move him around a bit. So he was deliberately done to look like he was ungainly, but I think I'd just tweak the pose a bit to make it look less... I don't know, like, was in it, like his Terminator armor was 
a very sophisticated uh, walking frame. That was just a couple of little things I did on the modeling. Okay, so the overall piece. So yeah, as I say, Heretic Deb or Deb did this for me as a commission piece. It was actually one of the first pieces she did when she started her commission painting business. And uh, I, well, I was delighted with the outcome. I quite wanted her to paint these because she she's quite interested in this era of the heresy. And I like to try and match my projects up to my commission projects that I hand out to people who I think have got the right st painting style for a particular set of miniatures. And that was uh, one of the big drivers for choosing Deb to do these. And what we have is we have this sort of setup with uh, this ruin of bones and skulls and debris with Corfair on an Erebus stud atop it. Now, you could paint this, have this painted up in a number of ways. I wanted it doing Calth style, so you can imagine they are stood in ruins of Calth, and you'll notice that I've got my first ultramarine in my heresy collection there, which is a, a nice feature. I do appreciate a little. Uh, Bit of Legio 13 action but it, it is a nice looking it is a really nice looking diorama and of course both of these miniatures come off this diorama for gaming purposes and then if you wish to display them differently we would just look around you know there's plenty of detail in this one thing when I bought this it was supplied with this quite large mounting base actually oh look there's a Mark III pauldron, it looks like that. And I think possibly, I don't know if you could get this now on a smaller base, because this kit, I think this set came out maybe five years ago now, and I think there may be a size smaller oval base now, which might fit it a bit better if you wanted less black flat rim. You could also model this to have more stuff on it. I just assembled it as it was supplied by the kit in the kit by Forge World. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, the in terms of how she painted it, how I wanted it painting, well, I just basically said, well, do it in the style of the official Forge World, which was Erebus in his characteristic red armor and Corferon in his characteristic marble white as well which of course is a wonderful color contrast as we can well appreciate looking at them it is a great a great display set and of two such um, infamous characters from the heresy these two are arguably more than anyone else any other human in the 30k storyline, the people who cause the Horus heresy, so yes. Depending on your viewpoint, either they are the arch traitors or they are the apostles of the true nature of the universe, the primordial truth. So that is the display piece. Okay, now let's start with let's start with Erebus, shall we? Now Erebus is quite a snug fit, so I'm going to have to very carefully just tease him out of his location, there we go, that wasn't too bad. And I'm going to move the display base and core fair onto one side, so we've got a white backdrop to look at Erebus. So here we go, Erebus. I think it's the first chaplain, isn't it, as opposed to the high chaplain. He later, of course, oh, did he become the dark apostle? I just forget now. Well, let's see how close we can get to the car camera. But, I mean, it's such an amazing miniature. The detail on this model is absolutely stunning. And it's one of those early uh, sculpts that was done by the Forge World team. And I just forget who did this. But you, these are hand sculpted as opposed to digitally made. And... You, if you appreciate the hand sculpted look, you can see it in bucket loads in these models. It's really good in terms of detail and how everything sits. These these brilliant 
prayer scrolls, in terms of the motion, how they hang. It's all very wonderful. In terms of, obviously, the colour scheme, you know, you've got this very rich blood red armour, crimson arterial in places. But then again, sat we've got the bone, the bone detail, so we can see these crouching skeletal winged angels, or perhaps fallen angels. This is a common icon in word bearers. Lots of skulls, of course. There's another winged angel, another one, another one, and then a book. A wonderful piece of corrupted iconography here. Because, of course, we have another pair of winged skeletal angels flanking the skull with Colchisian runes above it. But it mimics the later imperial design of the chest plate with the imperial eagle on as is common in Mark 7 and I suppose in the new range, Mark 10 Primaris armour. So there's a wonderful mockery of imperial insignia to come in this miniature and it's little details like that that really make this a lovely piece. So you have all these prayer scrolls as well and with him being the High Chaplain Erebus they are of course extra big and extra intricate Then you have his face. When she did this, she was only just starting out and she hadn't really practiced eyes, so she left the eyes undone and I added the eyes in later. So yeah, they are there. You might need to pause and zoom in, but they're, yeah, they're not bad. One, I, I didn't quite clean up the left hand eye properly and you, I wouldn't have really been able to see until it was painted, but that's a little bit, looks a little bit skewy because of the film, but it looks nice. But yes, he's, he's got a wonderfully frightening face. And of course, all the tattoos are depicted in bas relief across his head. And I really like the skin tone that Deb used, which is consistent with the pages of his books. And then, of course, there's prayer scrolls of his armour. So it's a nice linking with the colour there. It is an absolutely wonderful model. And even, I mean, you've got more word bearer iconography. I think this is their chaplain symbol. Before anyone asks, I accidentally dropped this miniature a few weeks ago. <laughs> Silly me. And he's missing a finger, the finger of Erebus. Erebus has been given the finger. So I need to rebuild that at some point because the finger is lost. So yeah, that's why that's like that. It's, it's not because of how the model came or how the painter did it is because uh, I had a doofus moment and dropped him. He has these candles on his pauldron and even there's even wax that's dripped down his armoured pauldron from those candles, so very stylistic. And of course, this is a heresy model, but he looks to all intents and purposes like a dark apostle, doesn't he? Or like a, like a chaos. Uh, the Yeah, it is a dark apostle, is the equivalent of a chaos chaplain. And of course, Erebus is a prototype for that, uh, which was to become a feature of the Traitor Legions in years to come. He has a nice skull on his Mark IV backpack. Of course, he's wearing a Mark IV style armor. I believe in the rules, he's equipped with artificial armor. The hand, he's got these finger gloves on, or finger gauntlets, as you can see, which, I don't know, there's something about a character like this having finger gauntlets, it just makes him extra creepy. And perhaps we imagine the ends are missing from those gloves, perhaps it helps him summon power from a warp, who knows. Um, all these beautiful piping details that she's picked out, you know, in the gold and the sort of brass tones. And all across his armour he's got this very intricate detail which is supposed to be the densely packed Colchisian runes running across his armour plates. Such rich, detailed models here, so absolutely incredible. His sidearm, his weapon of choice, is a plasma pistol. It has a wonderful little skull on the pommel, on the uh, 
the butt of the handle is that? I don't know. Pommel of the handle? Not pommel, but butt of the handle. You know what I mean. You can see what I mean anyway. So yeah, he's, he's well armed and uh, Erebus is a famously good fighter. Well, most of the time, except for when Khan got his hands on him. After Erebus did the dirty on Argyll Tarn. And then he has his chaplain's banner. And atop that is this book, a skull, and it is burning. And we have this, this star device as well, which, while it isn't an eight-pointed star, we can perhaps see what will become an eight-pointed star device. But yet, at the same time, it's like some imperial star devices. So, for example, an iron halo on a loyal marine as well. It does look a bit like that. So, once again, the sculpt of this is playing with imperial iconography and showing how similar it can look to the imagery and insignia of the traitors, which is, you know, it's very good. Um, on his right pauldron, he has this large book detail. And that's just crazy in terms of all this little intricacies and uh, all those pages which have been partially ripped away. I love that, that's brilliant. Again, as with his left hand, on his right hand he's got his creepy fingerless gauntlets. So yeah, definitely yeah. not a nice person is Erebus. And if you've read any of the Black Library novels and stories about Erebus, you will know just how unsavoury a character he is. He is one of the true unadulterated villains of the Horus Heresy. A lot of the traitors on some level are written in such a way that you can sympathise with them on a certain level and they're, they're being given human angles but in the case of Erebus he really is a baddie, a proper bad guy. He wants to worship the dark gods and he doesn't care how many people die in the process. And probably actually, the more the better actually. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. So yeah, so we go. Erebus of the word bearers, the first chaplain. So the kind of he was a first among equals of all the chaplains. It's quite an interesting bunch in the books, particularly. I thought they were very interesting in terms of how they were portrayed in First Heretic. Very ambitious, scheming individuals of the word bearer chaplains, even before the heresy got going and, and after the legion was corrupted in secret. Wonderful. Okay, so let's now put Erebus. Actually, we'll put Erebus there and we'll take Corfiron out. So Corfiron comes out of the base a lot easier. That's nice. I think with a bit more work I could have made Erebus come out more easily as well, but hey-ho. Right, so a very different second miniature in the form of Corfiron. Now, one thing you do notice about Erebus, he looks strong, vigorous, in a dynamic stance. And that is completely contrasted by Corfiron, who looks ungainly and awkward and lumbering. And that is reflecting his age and the nature of the armour he's wearing. And what a contrast as well. Corfiron wears this almost marble-coloured cataphracty plate, or specialised cataphracty plate. I just forget the name of this suit. Hmm. There you go. A prize for you guys and girls down in the comments, if you can remember the name of Corfiron's cataphracty armour. But yeah, it's an advanced suit. And despite the fact, stats-wise, he's only normal human strength and toughness at three, he gets an extra wound. So he has four wounds, which is only a handful of Praetor-level characters in the Heresy who have four wounds. And though that extra wound, or perhaps even two extra wounds, represents the remarkable constitution his armour grants him. So what do we see with the first captain? So this whole thing is around showing how he's not quite a full Astartes. And I suppose one thing is within these powered lightning claws, or within the lightning claw gauntlets, you can see the his rather 
thin and weak looking arms which are way less muscular and strong than a full Astartes would be. Colour wise, Debs, she'd gone for the sort of pale grey armour and then we've got the gold, the bronze, the silver highlights contrasting against that. Also she's she's brought plenty of red in as well which is appropriate for a word bearer. Looks really cool. His armour very clearly crafted into the relief are many called Chisian runes. And they look great and they bring so much character to this model. What's already a very intricate model, those runes add so much more. Here's an interesting thing thinking about the heresy. The recent released Psy Titan for Adeptus Titanicus has a number of runes on it as well, I believe, or they certainly painted it onto the studio model, the Ordo Sinister Psy Titan. And I invite you to go look at the similarities between these Colchisian runes and the runes adorning that Titan. Gokos, of course, used to say what's good and bad warp. So nice. And his face has got a very leathery skin tone, much like Erebus, perhaps even more so. And his face has got, he's got a very long, haggard looking face, which suits his character perfectly. You almost imagine he should have a little bit of dribble running down out of one corner of his mouth. But so many details again, We've got prayer papers, lots of books, word bearer flame icons, his turgies on the cataphracti are like little individual prayer scrolls, which is a wonderful touch by the sculptor. Again, on his left pauldron, we have a book, a book relief with the word bearer flame on it. And interestingly, that is the opposite pauldron to the one where Erebus has his book relief. So an, an interesting little contrast there. So there's no like single shoulder it should go on. I just love how they did this armour. I mean, it is like a full suit of cataphracti, but it's different as well. And they've put these extra pistons on it and power cablings. There you can see there. And it's to give it this feel of it being like a, a device that's, that's actually giving him physical support as well as boosting his strength because of his age. And the same is true of the lightning claw gauntlets. You can see these like additional almost like additional strengthening pistons because it doesn't have the raw strength of a full Astartes warrior. A little um, braiding detail there with the seal on it. Perhaps, oh gosh, does that look like a purity seal? I think it does. I think once again the uh, sculptor's messing with our heads there in terms of imperial versus traitor iconography. Wonderful. And uh, Deb did a wonderful job of picking out all these details. And yeah, I really like the, the strong contrast you got between the dark black, the red, the gold trim, and then the pale gray of the armor. I think that all looks lovely, very nice. I think Corferon is a fantastic model. I mean, a lot of it's in the pose, his face, but also these incredible lightning claws. There's no model that has lightning claws like this guy. I mean, even Kurz doesn't quite have as nutty lightning claws as Corferon, I would argue, or even Korax for that matter. Maybe we need to get the Emperor of Mankind to have some truly crazy lightning claws, even more crazy than Corferon's. Yeah, wonderful model. And ooh, and here we have one skull, and perhaps we could imagine that to symbolize a whole galaxy's worth of victims. Just as um, Erebus does. Although Erebus gets a long bone as well. I wonder what the symbolism there is. 
was Erebus more guilty? Hmm. Interesting to think that. There's an interesting thought for the comments. Who was more responsible for the heresy, Corfiron or Erebus? Or were they equally to blame? Yeah, another wonderful miniature. And such a great contrast to uh, Erebus. And, and that as a whole just makes this set such a... I don't know, it, it really is an iconic character series set for the heresy. Wonderful stuff. And yeah. And I'm delighted with uh, how Deb did the painting on these two uh, to really bring it to life. And again, putting them side by side, you can see that, you know, Corfiron has a bulk of his Terminator armor, but yet he does look awkward and ungainly when compared to Erebus. And Erebus actually looks, in some ways, in, in terms of his his actual stature, his underlying physique, you can see he's bigger and stronger than Corfiron. And that's uh, yeah, another thing that's just so wonderfully captured in these miniatures. I think we've looked at everything there, haven't we? So yeah, let's uh, reunite the terrible twosome with their scenic diorama base. I mean, some people might even call them jerks for what they did causing the heresy. You'll have to leave your thoughts and comments about this pair, but whatever you think of them, they are an amazing pair. And if you're wondering why I've started a project on the word bearers, is I suppose part of it, you know, if you've watched my Retro Hammer videos, you will know that many years ago, I had a World Eater Chaos Army from the Slaves to Darkness era. So I like that about them. And I also think if you're gonna do a traitor side then, why not just go full on and don't hold back? Go with the traitor's traitor. Go word bearers. Go Legio 17. So I hope you've enjoyed this little showcase of these two beautifully painted models by Heretic Deb. I'll leave some links to her social media, so please do check out her stuff if you're interested. This is the first video in probably four or five, which I'll be doing on the word bearers I've got painted so far. The next video, we will be looking at Gal Vorbach, so something to look forward to there. As always, please do share your thoughts and observations down in the comment section about these two. I'll be very interested to hear. Do you own a Corferon or an Erebus? Have you bought the set just so you can turn them into dead models on your bases because you don't like them? Would you never buy them because of who they are? Or have you bought two sets because you love the heresy? Whatever you think, I'll be interested to hear. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.